John McDougall, best-selling author and medical doctor, has recently made a video bashing yet again the keto diet. But what these low-carb diets do is they make people sick. They put them in a state called ketosis. In fact, they even call them keto diets these days. And that refers to the metabolic condition that occurs. Well, naturally occurs uh, when you're starving to death. <laughs> and it naturally occurs if you're seriously ill. And that's one of the reasons that I refer public to, to these low carb diets and Atkins diet uh, as, as the make yourself sick diets. Which got me wondering, what is scientifically proven better for weight loss? The McDougall diet or the keto diet promoted by influencers such as Dr. Eric Berg? So in this video, we're looking at the John McDougall program and we're gonna compare it to Dr. Eric Berg's nutrition recommendations. In doing so, you will discover what the absolute best diet is for rapid and sustainable weight loss, what the best diet is for you to have the least amount of cravings and hunger, and lastly, what the best diet is for you to reduce the chances of you suffering from chronic diseases in the long term. Because a six pack is of no use if your time is spent hanging around in a hospital, am I right? For those that are new here, hi, I'm Florian, award-winning person trainer, published author and vegan since eight years. So let's just dive right in. To discover what is best for sustainable and rapid weight loss, we have to look at what differentiates the McDougall program from a keto diet. The McDougall program, recommended by Dr. John McDougall in his national best-selling books, is based on a vegan, high-carb, low-fat diet. It avoids any animal products, including meat, cheese, and dairy products. It also has no oil. And instead, the diet is full of starches, so potatoes, rice, and all that good stuff, with the addition of either fresh or frozen fruits or vegetables. So to sum it up, the McDougall program, or the McDougall diet, is high in carbs, low in fat, and low in protein. Now, on the other hand, the keto diet, promoted by wildly popular chiropractor Dr. Eric Berg, avoids all starch-based foods and reduces carbohydrate intake to a minimum. So on that side, it's the polar opposite of the starch-based diet of John McDougall. Instead, it focuses on moderate amounts of protein, often containing a lot of animal products with high fat. So to sum it up, the keto diet is high in fat, low in carbohydrates, and moderately high or decently high in protein. Another differentiating factor is the John McDougall diet does not like coffee, while a keto diet does. Now to find the best possible diet of these two, that gives us the best possible results in weight loss for the limited time and effort that we do apply, we should not look at who of these two influencers is more convincing. I think Dr. Eric Berg would win that match. He's a master salesman. Just look at how many supplements he sells. And he's young and he's attractive. Now don't get me wrong, Dr. John McDougall is a physical specimen as well, but he's a few years older. So instead, when it comes to matters of health, we won't think like Elon Musk. We want to boil nutrition down to its constituent parts and then reason up from there. This is called first principles thinking. And as the name implies, we want to think. We want to use our brain, which believe it or not, is something very few people do. Me sometimes included. But let's try. In a previous video, we've seen that we have three macronutrients, right? Protein, fat, and carbohydrates. Carbohydrates have a caloric content of four calories per gram, protein as well, four calories, and fat has nine calories per gram. Given that multiple studies have already proven that the only thing that truly matters for weight loss is calories, Debunking intermittent fasting in the process, as it recently has turned out in recent studies, that the only reason intermittent fasting works is by reducing calories. And the crazy nutrition professor even starved himself with Twinkies and losing 27 pounds in the process to prove that only calories matter. It makes sense to look at the macronutrients and ask ourselves one question. What helps us decrease our caloric intake? So which macronutrient does it make sense to avoid? Carbohydrates, again, four calories per gram. Protein, four calories per gram. Or fat, which has nine calories per gram. It's a fat, right? To put this in context, let's use an analogy here. Let's say you're the CEO of a wildly successful company. And let's say you're spending $10,000 per month in ad spend. You have a few decisions to make here. Should you spend that money on Facebook ads, which gives you a decent return? on YouTube ads, which gives you a decent return as well, or on Reddit ads, which give you a horrible return. Now imagine you as the CEO waltz in on a Monday morning meeting 
at the beginning of the month and proudly announce that 80% of your marketing budget will be spent on Reddit ads. Even you absolutely know and everyone knows that Reddit ads is not as efficient as spending the money or the limited resources that you have on other avenues. So spending your money on the wrong type of ads is the same thing as spending your limited calories on the wrong type of macronutrient. So the absolute last thing you would do as a sane thinking individual, a group that makes up at max 1% of the population, is circling your diet around fat if weight loss is the goal. At this stage, the nationally renowned diet, the McDougal program, does have an edge over the keto diet by Dr. Eric Berg. John McDougal has definitely made his calculations, whereas Dr. Eric Berg probably didn't. Now the speed of weight loss is handed, but where is losing weight actually easier? After all, we would probably prefer a weight loss routine where we don't have to starve ourselves, but we lose our weight a little bit slower versus a weight loss routine where you're starving yourself and you lose the weight very quickly, right? So let's see which diet facilitates weight loss by reducing cravings and hunger. Out of the three macronutrients, what is the least satiating? Is it carbohydrates, again with 4 calories per gram? Or protein, with 4 calories per gram? Or is it fat, with 9 calories per gram? According to science, it's fat. But what is the most satiating macronutrient? As you've seen in that previous study, it was previously in the past thought to be protein. But while protein gives you an immediate satiety response, it does not influence your caloric intake over the long term, which is what matters, right? But the fiber found in carbohydrates does. It gives you a satiety response and influences your caloric intake over the next few meals. So it's carbs. This is why the most satiating food, according to a 1995 study in the European Journal of Nutrition, is a boiled potato. Which is probably one of the reasons best-selling author John McDougall had the potato on his Stark Solution book. Now a question you might have, isn't the lack of protein in one's nutrition, because it's very carb-heavy and low in fat, going to make you lose a lot of muscle in a weight loss process? As a person that trains a lot, I absolutely do understand that concern. But it's not a factor. Studies show that the doubling of your protein intake during weight loss does not preserve muscle mass. The best way to prevent muscle mass during weight loss is with an exercise program, which John McDougall and Dr. Eric Berg, to his credit, both recommend. So the diet or the program that facilitates weight loss by reducing craving and hunger is the John McDougall program. So let's say you got in shape. You look in the mirror and you see a rock hard six pack. Then you put your surgical gown down, you put the IV back in and you walk back to your hospital bed because you got sick in the process. Yeah, fuck that. So the best diet is the one that helps you get in shape quickly and sustainably, while also making sure that you live healthy in the long term, right? So which gives you the best lasting health benefits? The John McDougall program or the keto diet? We're looking for the diet that helps you reduce chronic fatigue, reduce heart disease risk, improve high blood pressure and potentially go off medications and reduce your chances of serious illnesses and health problems in the long term. Now let's take a look at what the science says. The only diet ever to be proven to reverse heart disease in a clinical setting is a low-fat, high-carb vegan diet. The largest study on cancer and nutrition has found that cancer is geographically localized. Meaning the lower fat plant-based your nutrition is, the lower your total net risk of cancer. Even studies on the downsides of a low-fat vegan diet, such as due to lower iron intake, always quote that a vegetarian or a vegan diet high in carbohydrates is extremely healthy. On the other hand, recent studies quote that the keto diet's risk may outweigh the perceived short-term benefits. So on disease prevention, the John McDougall diet clearly wins as well. So in other words, McDougall's diet is for people with a brain and the keto diet is pretty much for everyone else. So if you're looking to make your first step to get in fantastic shape, but you're suffering from analysis paralysis, you don't really know which next step to take, you should download my free ebook called The Fit Vegan Secrets. It's a controversial and rather revolutionary fitness book that helps you do what you know that you should do. It has 109 pages, the value of it is $19.95 and it's engineered for you to master it in a short afternoon and it gives you benefits for decades. For an absolutely limited time, you can get it for free by heading over to fitvegans.com secrets.
So thank you so much for watching this video and I see you next time. Ha, huh, got you.